So God wants us to move into realms of influence. I mean, I heard the Lord. Some of y'all have heard this. But 30 years ago, I heard the word of the Lord as I was praying one in a setting where the weight of God's presence was there. And I heard God say to me, not I wasn't trying to hear something. I wasn't thinking about myself. I was just enjoying the weight of God's presence in that moment. And God spoke to me. And he said, I will make your name as one of the great men of the earth. Now, here's what I thought. I would just about two or three years before that birth a church. And so this is what I immediately thought. Oh, this church is going to become really large and everybody's going to know who I am. Well, guess what? That never happened. And so time progressed. And every time an opportunity would come or a door would open, I would think, oh, this is the way God's going to fulfill that word. And it never happened. In fact, many times I would be promised things that I would think this is the way God's going to do it. And then that thing that I had been promised wouldn't even materialize. It would just be, it would, it would be sabotaged somehow or another. I remember after I'd written the book on operating in the courts of heaven, the first one, Charisma contacted me because somehow or another they know what's selling out there. Because my daughter, it was a self-published book because nobody would publish it when I wrote it. And Dutch Sheets told me, he said, the reason they won't, re they won't publish it is because they're afraid of it. And so, he said, and so he had told me that. He said, and he had told me this is a really good book. He said, you're actually answering questions for me that I've had myself that I didn't know what the answer was. So, so it, you know, it, it, people, there were people that were saying good things about it to me. But nobody would publish it. So what happened was my daughter, she was doing my, you know, helping me with the administration. She sold 100,000 copies of that book out of her garage. Now, that's a lot of books to go out of a little garage. And you might just do the math and might figure out why God, you know, how I say God has blessed us. So, so, so she sold 100,000 copies out of her garage, and it got so overwhelming that we were trying to handle it that, that, that uh, people started coming and asking, could they acquire the book? And Charisma was one of them. Charisma wanted the book. And so they, they had emailed the office, and my daughter called me all excited because she said, Dad, because nobody would give me the time of day. I remember Dr. Wagner, Peter Wagner looked at me one day and he said, Robert, you've got to get these books published. And I said, Dr. Wagner, and they won't publish them. <laughs> I mean, he was angry at me. And I said, but I don't know what you want me to do. When you publish a book, they've either got to know your name or they, they've got to have an, a, a, an awareness that, that, that you're somebody that somebody's going to pay attention to. Well, nobody would give me the time of day. So I was just doing what I did. My daughter called me. She said, Dad, Charisma wants your book. It was like, oh, my gosh, somebody actually wants something I have. But see, I had been so disappointed so many times for 30 years that I said, oh, okay. And she could tell I wasn't excited. Now, why wasn't I excited? Because I had been disappointed so many times that I was filled with hope deferred. Because I'd just given up. I was just doing life and doing ministry and doing what I did. But I didn't have any vision left in me of what God wanted to do. Because I couldn't figure out why nothing ever seemed to work. And so I'm, I'm, I'm in this state and, and my daughter says, Dad, they want your book. And I said, okay. I said, well, you know, send the back. Say, it. We'll, we're, we're, we're interested. And she said, Dad, Dad, I don't think you hear me. She said, she said, they want your book. I know this is God, Dad. I know that, that this is the Lord. I know that this is what you're supposed to be doing. And she's going on and on because she's very prophetic. So she's going on and on. And she's not getting from me the response she thinks she should be getting. Because I'm full of hope deferred, and I'm like, watch, it, it hurts too much to get my hopes up and then have them dashed again. So I'm just not going to get them up anymore. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So that's where I was. So she's going on and on. Dad, I know this is God. I know this is what he intends. Come on, Dad. We got we to gotta do something about this. And, and then she said this as she is going on and trying to, like, get me excited. 
She says these words. She said, Dad, I know this is God. She said, I've always known you would change the world. It was like a dagger into my heart. Because I suddenly realized my daughter had hopes and dreams for me that I had given up on. And I said, God, you're going to have to heal my heart. Because all the disappointments, it's turned me into a pessimist. It's turned me into a skeptic. And so I began to let God do a work in my heart. Because my, the, daughter, the words of my daughter pierced my heart. And so what we started doing, we started, we started in seeking the Lord. And then out, out of the understanding of the courts of heaven, I began to realize there was bloodline issues. For instance, for instance, there's two major areas in my bloodline that I dealt with that broke things open. One was that there was a covenant with a demon god named Parax. And that when I went into the courts and annulled that out of my bloodline, it lost its rights to hold me in restrictions. And to put limitations on me. And I annulled that with some, with some people helping me do that. So, I, so I, I dealt with that. But then there were still, there was, there was breakthroughs that started coming. But then there were other restrictions that seemed to be still on my life that I couldn't seem to get into. I couldn't seem to move into, the, to in, into the, you know, those, those new realms, those new places that God had. And all of a sudden, I have a dream. And in the dream, there is a judgment against me presently because my great-great-grandfather had, through negligence, injured somebody. This was the dream. And the dream was so real that, that I thought, I thought, this is, this is like a real thing in, in the natural. And I woke up, and I woke up terrified because I thought... There's a literal judgment in the natural against me. You ever have one of those kind of dreams? Or, or at least wake up with, with a sense of it being so real even in the natural? That's what was going on. But as I got awake, I realized, oh, wait, wait this, isn't, this isn't in the natural. It's real, but it's not in the natural. And I began to realize that God was, was, was showing me something in my bloodline that was being used as a legal right to presently, uh, pre uh, presently re uh, resist the future God had for me. That, there, that my great-great-grandfather had through negligence done something that had damaged somebody. And suddenly the Lord spoke to me. He said, your great-great-grandfather through negligence, he said he injured somebody and stole their dreams away. Therefore, the enemy has claimed the legal right to steal your dreams away. And so I got up and I immediately went, if you will, into the courts of heaven, began to repent for the sin, the iniquity of my great-great-grandfather, which obviously I never knew. Don't even know what his name was, honestly. But I just began to repent as God is my witness. In a week or less, doors started opening that have not stopped up to this very point.